Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellen from Mr. Excel. We'll have Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. Jim from YouTube sent in this mind-bending question. $273. How do we do that in bills? So that's a $200 bills, $150, $120, uh, and so on. And so let's get rid of these hard-coded numbers and see if we can build this. It's going to be two different formulas. First formula. First formula. I know I'm going to use the int function. Equal int of this number, 273, I'm going to press F4, one, two, three times to lock it to column A, divided by this number up here in row one, so I'll press F4, one, two times, and I should get two, beautiful, okay, now I'm going to copy that formula over, yeah, there would be 550s in 273, but I don't want 273, I want to subtract out everything that I've already done before me, so minus and then a closing parenthesis. Okay, what am I going to put in here? What am I going to put in there? I need to subtract 100 times 2, but as I move that formula across, it's going to need to subtract 100 times 2 and 50 times whatever that number is and 20 times whatever that number is. So I'm going to use some product, some product. And this is going to be a treat here. It's going to be, um, we definitely going to always want to start in B. So dollar sign B, dollar sign 1, colon, not dollar sign B, dollar sign one. All right, so we're going to multiply that range, and then uh, we always want to start in B again. Dollar sign B two without a dollar sign colon B two. Isn't that the weirdest combination of dollar signs you've ever seen? And let's see, we need a closing parenthesis to finish off the sum product. Uh, 200, yeah, that looks right. Let's copy it across, see how we do. Uh, so 250, 70, yeah, 273, it works. Let's try it. We'll copy this down, put a whole bunch of different numbers in and see what we get. Equal three time, or three plus. That way we just try out some different numbers here and copy that down. I'll go check, uh, what do I do? Control V, check here at 300, so there's $300 bills and nothing else, 303, uh, yeah, without doing a proof, looks like it works. All right, that's what I have, Mike, let's see what you can come up with. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, this is an amazing question, and I love the part of Mr. Excel's formula where you use the sum product. I want to give you a little visual on that. Remember, we had to multiply 100 times 4. Uh, when we got to this cell, but when we're over here, we need to do 100 times 4 and 50 times 1 to get 450 bucks to subtract from there. Here's a, a formula, sum product. I locked the first one in that range, and I locked the first one in this range. This allows it to be an expandable range, so when I click and drag it this way, you could see here the range has expanded. Over here, the range has expanded still further. One other thing, I decided to put uh, 100. Uh, oh, 100 in the cell, but it looks like there's the word bill. Control 1, that's custom number formatting. In quotes, bill. That way I can see, oh, we're counting $100 bills. Now, uh, Mr. Excel used the int function. I'm going to go ahead and use the quotient function. What's that? Well, we you probably, if you've watched uh, these podcasts, you've seen the mod function a lot. What does the mod function uh, and the quotient function do? They're both related to division. The mod takes uh, 487 divided by 100 and gives you the remainder. Quotient, it takes 487 divided by uh, 100 and tells you how many uh, the integer part of it, so we get 4. Now, quotient and integer deal with negative numbers differently, and I have some notes down here if you want to download this workbook. Ah, but for our money situation where it's positive, it's going to make no difference. I'm going to start off by doing quotient, and we need a numerator, that's the top, comma, and then the uh, denominator, that's the bottom. So, int and quotient will give us the same there. And then I'm going to go ahead and do quotient again. And the numerator, remember, once I get past the first column, I need to add up all of the bills that have already been used. So I'm going to take this and lock it going to the side. I'm not going to copy it down like Mr. Excel did. And from that amount, I'm going to subtract. And that's where that sum product comes in. I'll take that, lock it for the column, comma, and the second array will be this one right here. 
and uh, lock that right there. Uh, by the way, uh, what I did there is once I typed the first cell reference, I did shift colon. Let's try that again because that is a good trick. I'm going to boop and then shift colon while the dancing ants are still dancing right there. And it puts the second uh, cell reference with a colon and then I can highlight that one and lock it. All right, so now that is the numerator, comma, and then the denominator is simply that right there. Close parentheses, control enter, and then copy it over. Now I like to check it here equals sum product. Uh, as you saw, Mr. Excel's faster at doing math in his head than me. Uh, I can't do that. I'm done Excel so long I forgot basic math. Ah, but the sum product will check it for us. I just go, Roop. hey, all of those, comma, Roop. all of those. And it does help if you make that little noise. But there it is. It'll take those, multiply them, and then add them. And so there we get our check figure. Now, notice we did one formula, two formula. Sometimes I don't like to do that. In this situation, it works just fine. But if for some reason you didn't, I didn't want to, uh, you could take this, and instead of starting at C1 to C1, you could start here and do that blank cell there and that blank cell there. Now, it will require that you had a blank cell there. But when I tried it, the sum product didn't handle it. Guess what? The sum product isn't as versatile as sum function when you enter it as an array. And sum function as an array will handle this. So I'm going to try equals quotient. I'm going to take this right here, F for it. And from it, I'm going to subtract not the sum product, but the sum. And I'm going to start right there. Shift colon to put that in and then lock that first one. Co not comma, but multiply and get that boop, right there. Shift colon, and then I'm going to uh, lock that one right there. Close parentheses. Ah, and so that is the numerator for quotient, and then we'll just do our denominator starting right there. Close parentheses. Ah, sum array, multiplying arrays, requires control shift enter. So you hold control shift and tap enter and then drag it over. And then you could do the same thing for with the sum product to check it there. All right, so we could uh, use that one with the sum control shift enter or uh, quotient there and quotient there. All right, we'll see you next trick. Hey, all right, Mike, that was cool using quotient. Love it. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Excel is Fun and Mr. Excel.